What's up, Mavericks? This is Erica Seppala, writer and editor here at Merchant Maverick. Today, I'm going to show you how to create invoices using Square so you can get paid by your customers. We really love Square because it offers a lot of features, including invoicing for no monthly fee. Free app is actually what I'm working with today. So with that being said, let's get right into it. We're going to start off in our Square dashboard and Square makes it really easy to create and send invoices. Navigate up here to the top and simply click send an invoice. And in a few seconds, a new invoice is going to pop up. We're going to start under the details section and our first field is to add a customer and we're going to have a few options here. John Smith is a customer that we already have saved in our Square profile. You may have numerous customers. Instead of sifting through those, you can go into this box and type their name, email address or phone number to easily find them. Or if it's a customer that you don't yet have saved into Square, you can simply click create new customer. There's a lot of fields here to fill out. The only thing that's required to send an invoice is the customer's first name, last name, their email address, and or their phone number. You would fill in that information and click save and it would add the customer. But we're just going to go back, click on the drop down again, and we're going to add our existing customer, John Smith. The next field is invoice title. You may have processes and procedures for how you want to name your invoices. We're just going to put remodeling for 123 Main Street. The next field is service date. Now you can leave the service date alt or you can go in here. You can select one of these preset settings like today in a week and two weeks, or you can click a specific date. Now this could be a date that the service was completed or some other kind of milestone that you've set with a customer. So we're just going to select July 18th and move into the next field, which is invoice ID. Square automatically sets these starting at one. You can go in and change the ID to whatever you want based on the processes of your organization. We're going to leave that alone. Next, you can type a message for your customer that will show up on the invoice. So we're just going to put thanks for your business. You also have the option that you can click under this box to write with AI. So if you want a more polished or professional message and don't know exactly what to put, you can go in here, you can select the length, you can change the tone, professional, casual, urgent, you can fill out that information. Click generate and AI will generate a message for you. But we're just keeping it simple by keeping our messaging as thanks for your business. So next we're going to move into the section for line items. These are the products or services that you are charging the customer for. And there's a few different ways to add an item. So we click on this box that says add an item. And the first thing you're going to see is this bathroom vanity pop up. This is an item that we have saved in our library. If you've already set up your library, you're going to have a lot more. The good news is in this add an item box, you can just simply type in the name of the product or the service to easily find it. We just have the single bathroom vanity. So we're going to click on that and it's automatically going to add it. The price that we've set is there and we can go in and we can update the quantity if wanted. This is the quickest and easiest way to add items to your invoices. So I would recommend getting your item library set up before you do this. Now there is an option if you don't have your item library set up, you can sp simply begin typing in the name of a product. Now, as you'll see, it's not going to find this. We don't have it saved. So let's assume that this is a product that we want to add to our library. Either we don't have our item set up, it's a new item, something like that. But we want to add it to our item library so that we can continue to sell this to customers. You're going to scroll to this option, create new library item, and we're going to click on that. And you can go in here and you can fill out all these fields, everything from the category to the price to SKUs. You can even add in images of the product if you wish but we are not going to do that. We're going to go back because there is another option that I'm going to show you. So if we have an item that we don't want to add to our pro product library, maybe it's something seasonal or something that we don't typically sell, a custom item, things like that, we can simply type in the name and instead of create new library item, we're going to select 
one-time item. When we click on that, it's going to show the name that we typed in. We can set the quantity and we can set the price. And we'll go in and change this to $50. Now, if you have barcode set up in a barcode scanner, you can click this little icon and scan your barcodes to add your items that way. We don't have this set up. So we're just going to unclick this and we're going to move on to the next section. So in this box, the first thing we're going to see is add discount. This is completely optional. If you're not adding a discount, you don't have to worry about this. But if you want to add a discount for your customer, you're going to simply click on this. Now under this box, you're going to see loyal customer. That is a discount that I have already set up that provides 5% off. So if we want to use that discount, we're going to check this box. And then we're going to click save. And as you can see, it adds all of the information that the customer would need, the name of the discount, the amount of the discount, and the total that it took off of their invoice. There is also an option if you don't have a discount saved, whether it's a one-time discount, it could be a new promotion, things like that, but it's not already saved. You can click the add discount and click on custom discount. You can put in the discount name, you can put in the amount and select the type. It's either going to be a percentage, 5% off, 10% off, things like that, or you can change it to an amount. So $20 off, $50 off, whatever. So if it's a one-time discount, you can fill in that information and you can click add and it's going to add it to this invoice. However, if it's a new promotion or something that you're going to be using often, you can click this checkbox down here and save that for future transactions. We're not going to add an additional discount. I just wanted to show you that feature. So then you scroll down and you see the subtotal with the discount is right here easily for the customers to see. The next section is the sales tax rate. I've already set that up in the back end. And if you just click on this info box, it tells you if you don't have this set up, where you can go and even provides a link for that. But we already have our 6% sales tax set up and it adds $19.95 to the customer's invoice. Now, if you have shipping fees or additional service charges that you want to add to the invoice, you're going to click this link here. As you see, we already have a shipping fee set up. We can click on that, type in the amount and then add. Now, if you don't have an existing fee or service charge and you do want to add that, you can create that from here or there's a link right here where you can create and manage these. Once you've done that, it shows the total and then you also have the option to add a late fee. We're going to click on that. You can do a percentage, you can do a flat rate, you can add a grace period. You would just fill this out, click save and that would add it to the invoice. We're not going to do that because if you add a late fee, you're going to be unable to add a payment schedule. So I want to show you that feature. You're just going to click this option right here. This will allow you to request a deposit, split the balance into milestones if you are a paid plus subscriber. And then this is where you set the specifics for the deposit. So it could be a percentage. It could be an amount. You set the due dates. You set how many reminders. Once you have all that information filled out, if you're going to request a deposit, you're just going to click save. And all of that information is going to be attached to your invoice. We're just keeping this very basic one time invoice that is paid immediately. So the next section that I want to look at is the attachment in custom fields. Click on this drop down and there are a few options here. Now you can add a PDF or a common photo file just simply by clicking add. This could be anything from photos of the product or the completed job, any kind of images that you would like to share with the invoice. Now the next option, if you want to create custom fields that is not available on the free plan, you will need to subscribe to Square Invoices Plus. But you can add custom data if you are a Plus subscriber. And the next section is Square Contracts. So if you want to attach a contract with your invoice, um, maybe just to verify payment was agreed upon when the job was completed, you'll just click Add. 
you can either create a new contract or if you already have the existing contract saved, you could click on that. As you can see, we have John Smith completion of services, and we're just going to click on that and save. It then gives you an option to require unsigned contracts to be signed before payment. If you're a plus subscriber, then below that, you'll see the information about the contract that has been attached. You can preview that if you want to make sure it's the correct one, to make sure there's no errors before you send it, whatever. We're just going to take the contract off because we're keeping this very simple. Now, at this point, you can go up to the top right and you can click on Preview. Now, this is going to give you a view of what your customer is going to see when you send the invoice. So as you can see, I have my logo, my business name, the invoice amount, the due date, the message that we set, the customer, the title that we also set, the invoice number, the service date if you chose that, and then a breakdown of all of the charges and discounts. Now, if you don't already have your logo, brand, color, and business information set up, Square gives you the option to click right here and go to Account Settings. Under Branding, you would simply go to this little pencil icon, click Edit. You can add your logo, add the small logo, and change the color that will be used on your invoices. Now, one tip that I will share is if you go into the preview and you like how everything looks, you can X out of that screen, come back here, and just move on. Now, if you decide that you want to go into the account settings, add a logo, update your colors, make any of these changes in different menus, I would come back to this screen, save your invoice as a draft, and then go and make those changes. Otherwise, you're going to lose your work into the void, and we don't want that. So moving on, we're going to go into this settings at a glance over on the right sidebar. We're going to start off with schedule, which we have to send this invoice immediately, and it is due today. If we click this drop down, you can see that there's two separate drop downs, and it has these predetermined dates, or you can choose a specific date. So this is great if you want to schedule your invoices ahead of time. You can also go in and change the due date based on the policies of your business. We're going to put this as due August 14th. It'll show how many days it will be due and the specific date. Moving into accepted payment methods, this just tells your customers and clients what type of payment methods you accept. So we're going to scroll down and you can just simply check these off or on based on what type of payment methods you accept or do not accept. I also really like that Square adds the transaction fees just very upfront with cost, always something we really like about Square. So for example, if we didn't accept Cash App Pay, we could just uncheck this and that will not be an option available for the customer to pay their invoice. So moving into payment options, you have the option to add a card on file or you can, and you can toggle this on for partial payments. So if this is off, the customer will be required to pay the full invoice. If it's toggled on, they can pay just a portion of the invoice and don't have to pay the total amount. The next section that we have is customer actions. You can turn on tipping if you want to allow the customer to provide a tip. You can allow the customer to save their payment method. If your customer shops with you a lot, this is a great time saver. You don't have to turn this on. In fact, any of these settings, most of them are completely optional, just really based on how your business operates. And then finally, in this section, Square has a new feature. It's a goods and services confirmation. So this is going to require the customer to confirm that they are satisfied with the products or services they receive before they are able to pay their invoice. The next section is how you're going to share the invoice with your customer. We have this to share via email, but we can click the drop down. If we add a phone number, we can send it via text message, or if we click share link, we can get a payment link that we can send to the customer however we wish. Under this section, you can also add additional recipients. Just simply click there, can add as many as you wish. We're going to move on next to reminders. As you can see, four reminders are already set. You can toggle this off or on to turn them on, or 
you can go in here, you can delete some of these by clicking the trash can icon. If you don't want the full reminders, you can click in here to edit reminders. So you can go up here to the top. If you want to add additional reminders, you can use the trash can icon to remove any of these reminders. You can update the, the days. You can update when it's sent on due date, after due date, things like that. So you can customize that to the policies of your business. And finally, we have shipping, which is off. However, if you have your ship it, shipment manager set up, this will allow you to toggle this on. So this order will be added to the shipment manager after the invoice is paid. Once we have all of our settings, we have the contact information correct, the invoice amount is correct, we've added fees, we've added our discounts, we have a few options here. If you go ahead and click send, that will either send it immediately, via the method that you selected in the settings or at on the date that you selected when we scheduled it. I'm not going to push this option right now simply because I don't have my full test account set up. So I'm going to get a lot of pop-ups from Square. So I'm just going to save it as a draft. This is a good option if you're not quite ready to send it. You still need some tweaks. Customer is still placing an order, anything like that. So we're going to save as draft. And then this is going to bring you to the payments and invoices section under invoices. And it is going to show all of the information at a glance, the invoice ID, the customer name, the date. It's going to show the status. It's going to allow you to send it. You can also just simply click on this and it will pop up. It'll show the recent activity for the invoice. It shows a breakdown of the invoice. This is where you can go in and you can click edit. If you want to duplicate it, you can. And there are more options. You can go in and delete it. You can create a recurring series. Whatever you want to do, it's all really easy, all really transparent. Um, you can also go through this menu if you want to create an invoice. It easily offers the option for single invoices, recurring invoices, or batch invoicing if you're a Plus subscriber. So other than that, that is how you create, customize, and send invoices through Square. Hope this information helps. If you have any specific questions about creating Square invoices or anything you're having trouble with on Square, just let us know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in, Mavericks, and we'll see you next time.